Well, let's uh, head out to Phil LeBeau. We got uh, preliminary first quarter results from United, and uh, yep. Phil has uh, a lot more on that for us. Thank you, Phil. Uh, David, not surprising that United, uh, I think we're going to see this from a number of airlines. They're saying, let's just get it out. Get out the news right now. The preliminary results for the first quarter, a pre-tax loss of $2.1 billion, revenue down 17% in the first quarter. The company also saying that it expects to have the ability to borrow up to $4.5 billion from the Treasury Department. Remember, this is that second bucket of money, that $25 billion that has been set aside for the airlines to borrow from Treasury. Uh, it'll cost United potentially potentially up to 14.2 million stock warrants or share or stock warrants equal to 14.2 million common shares of United. The company is also selling and then leasing back 22 aircraft to an Asian leasing firm. This is all about giving the, the balance sheet some financial flexibility here. They will be leasing those back after the sale. Speaking of doing something with your portfolio of planes, either selling it, deferring orders, keep an eye on Boeing. Now, Pre-market, this stock is under pressure. The city note where they basically downgrade them to neutral talks a lot about the uncertainty that is ahead in terms of the order book for Boeing. Leasing firms are cutting their uh, max orders. You had one, a Chinese leasing firm, cutting its max order by 29 planes. That came out early this morning. Remember, Boeing resumes production up in the Seattle area starting today and then ramping it up gradually on the wide body line throughout the week. But guys, we're entering an interesting couple of weeks here for Boeing. You've got the virtual annual meeting next week, and you also have the first quarter results being announced on Wednesday of next week. And of course, people are going into this saying, okay, do we hear some kind of a deal between Boeing and the Treasury Department? Boeing has said they're still waiting for terms from the Treasury Department, and Boeing has not made up its mind whether or not it borrows from the Treasury Department or if it does that in combination with the private market. Guys, back to you. Let me ask you, Phil, when you look at the progression for that first quarter that they give you a pre-announce, I have to believe the chain and February were quite strong and that March yes. just must have been a disaster. They were. They were, on, they were on pace for a record first quarter ah. until March happened. I mean, all the airlines practically were. I, every time you talk with an airline executive, they will tell you that heading into March, they expected the first quarter to be one of their strongest first quarters ever. And typically, the first quarter is not a great quarter for the airline industry, but they were expecting strong results. So it definitely, they hit a brick wall come March. And, and that is really, you saw the impact of the transatlantic flights first being canceled, and then basically the domestic market uh, quickly shutting down. Yeah, Phil, we were talking earlier about when we'll really start to see the resumption of business travel in a significant way, or whether it will forever be in some way diminished Right. Because so many people have successfully worked from home or are reluctant to send somebody for simply a handshake meeting, so yep. to speak. Not sure where you come down on that, but how does that play into the airline's view and whether they're going to need yet another bailout come the fall? Well, that's the big question right now. Look, when we talked with Doug Parker last week, he indicated some, some slight optimism and very slight. I mean, he made it clear that things are, are terrible right now. But he said, look, we actually are doing some work with potential business conventions in the fourth quarter. Now, d does that mean that it's business as usual? Oh, of course not. None of the airlines expect that. The focus is going to be what happens after September 30th. And United has already come out and said, look, if we do not see an increase in demand, whether it's on the leisure or on the business side, there will be the possibility of job cuts because they simply do not have the business that they need in order to justify the level of employment. And remember, they have to keep those jobs in place through September 30th, not just United, but all the airlines as a part of the agreement for taking the payroll grants from the Treasury Department.